Welcome to the Warriors of Light podcast, where we interview other Warriors of Light, people who are up to big things and making a positive impact in the world. And today I have a very special guest. Skeliana is joining us all the way from Arizona. And um, I'm really excited to have you on today, Geliana. So Geliana and I, I first met you years ago. I don't even know if you remember meeting me. It was kind of in this business setting. It was in a networking, you used to run a big networking group in Phoenix. And then recently you've come back into my awareness and we've kind of both gone through this journey and this evolution and now we're in different spaces and meeting in a different place. So uh, I'm really excited to talk with you. And the reason why I wanted Geliana on today is because her story, her journey is so beautiful of how she really stepped into alignment with her purpose and um, became what I consider to be a warrior of light, which is somebody who is living her purpose, being a conduit and a channel for the universe's light, love, energy, and truth to to flow through her. So Galeana, welcome to the show today. It is such a pleasure and an honor to be here. And thank you for that beautiful introduction. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to have you. And I'd love to just start out by you explaining to people what it is that you do. And then maybe we'll go into a little bit of the journey of how you got there. Because um, my I, I know there's a lot of people that are listening to this that are asking, how do I more fully step into my purpose? How can I make a greater difference in the world? How can I be a change maker? How can I create meaningful results in my life and the lives of other people? And you're doing just that. So first of all, let's talk about what you're doing and how you're aligning with your spiritual gifts and living your full purpose. Yeah, I know that that is a great place to start, you know, so um, something that I've found myself in the, the niche essentially is reading people's soul contracts, right? And helping them understand why they're here, which is the question that so many of us ask as we go through this human journey, right? Why am I here? What's my purpose? Um, you know, oftentimes when we're faced with challenging times in life, we say, why is this happening? You know, and, you know, so many people say, I must have done something in a past life or, but this is where they're referring to karma, essentially. Yeah. So, so th this very specific work that I do is I read people's soul contracts and I can see the karma that they brought into this lifetime from their past lives which essentially the karma is going to be their biggest challenges in lives. Um, I can see the unique talents they've brought in and also their core soul purpose. Like what is the main purpose of this lifetime? And I do all of this by working with the sound frequencies of their birth name. Mm. Well, and this is so, so interesting. And I want to point this out because when you first said soul contracts, so often when I think of soul contracts, I think of contracts between other people, like mm -hmm. what is my soul contract with my partner or my children? But when I spoke with you it, and it's more of what you're doing, I mean, although you do that as well, you're talking about what are people's soul contract with the universe? Like, what is it that you are sent here to do? And as we know, when you align with your purpose, that's when you get fulfillment. So I love that 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 definition of a soul contract and when you said that it opened up my mind to really like oh yeah we we all do we have these soul contracts these purposes and really that fulfillment comes when we align with it and also uh, doing that with the birth names is really significant too like explain a little bit more how that's done because how can you tell somebody's soul contract based on is it like the letters is it the I mean you said sound frequency a little bit how does that work yeah, no, that is a wonderful question. So um, sound frequency is actually extremely powerful when it comes to creation and creating our reality. Okay, so here's an example I like to give everyone before I break this down for you. But in all of my readings, this is how I essentially start. Regardless of how you feel about the Bible, right? But if we take the Bible as a reference point, in the very beginning, there's literally nothing until God starts to speak things into existence, right? So God is. Using I want to. I want to pause right here because I want to say something <laughs> because there are so many people in this, you know, that I know of in my group that are like, "Oh, the Bible's true," and there's so many people like, I, "I'm not Christian. I don't believe in the Bible." But whether you believe in the Bible as a Christian or not, this is like the most powerful historical script ever in like all of the world. So um, I just want to say that. So anytime someone says in the Bible, it says, I'm like, okay, I'm going to listen to this either from the, the ears of, Hey, I'm a Christian. I believe in the Bible this way, or from the perspective of like, 
wow, this is the most impactful text and book ever. So, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. Well, and the thing is the beginning of the Bible, I mean, it's not just Christian you're talking. I mean, I could say the Torah, right? I well, could say, true, yeah. So I'm not necessarily making a reference to the, so just to clarify, I'm not referencing the Christian, you know, New Testament. I'm literally referencing the beginning of even all the three major religions. And again, this, but again, it's I know right. a lot of people have a challenge with the religion. So that's why I say, regardless of how you feel about it, this is just a phenomenal reference point that we've all heard, right? And so, but it's interesting because of all the ways God could create, it's with voice, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, um, in, in the, another reference point many people are familiar with is, is um, uh, healing with sound, right? So sound healing, sound baths, like that's something that's that a lot more people are a lot more familiar these days. So sound is just extremely powerful. Um, and I don't know uh, if you watch Gaia, I I'm obsessed with Gaia, right? That's yeah. like one of the, it's like YouTube for spiritual people. One of their latest series is on sound and they talk about all of this. So they break it all down because there's so much math behind sound frequency. So that's essentially what I do is I take your birth name and I'm breaking it down into science and into, well, into math, I should say, into the sound frequencies, the math. And then I'm taking um, the numbers, right? So you can almost think of this as numerology, but not the Western numerology that all of us are familiar with, right? So this is not working with your birth date numerology, but I am working with the sound frequency numbers of your name. Um, and yes, each sound does have a particular frequency, right? So ah uh, is one, okay? Mm -hmm. And then it just you know goes on. So um, I take the birth name, I break it down into sounds. Now, the other thing that um, I get some pushback on, people say, but I didn't choose my name. My parents chose my name. Okay, well, that's, according to my work, that's actually not the case. Because before a soul comes back into any given lifetime, the soul actually makes all these decisions. Okay, so the soul chooses its own birthday. Um, the soul chooses the karma that it wants to bring in. Um, the soul chooses the purpose, the soul chooses the parents, the soul chooses what it's going to look like, the soul chooses when it's going to exit out of this life, and the soul chooses its name. Yeah. Um, and so it's the soul's job to get it to the parents, and it's the parents' job to get it correct, or whoever's going to be helping, you know, the siblings or just the people around them. Well, and I, I thought this was so fascinating when you said this to me, and I'd actually heard this previously. I'd um, had somebody do a reading with my name, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and they said the same thing, and it really resonated with me, and it makes sense. We do. We get to pick our names before we come here, and, um, and, and okay, here's an interesting question, um, and this is just, this is something that I think is really fascinating. We're seeing a lot of people change their names these days, even myself. I'm going through this, like, a new name change where I felt really inspired to change my name. What does it mean if you're feeling called to have a name change partway through your life or take on the spiritual name or, uh, I mean, how, how do you account for that? Wonderful question. So it means that you're ready to step into your next mission, right? Mm -hmm. Because as we go through life um, and we have different phases of life, we like, we're here to do different things at different points in our life. Um, and so I also changed my name um, very recently, right when I was ready to step into doing this work, you know, and so oftentimes, so few, so few things to say about this. Um, oftentimes I get people that come to me and say, I've never resonated with my name. I've never liked it. You know, maybe I was supposed to be named something else. Well, the thing that I tell people is it's not so much about the first name, right? Like let's say Allison, it's not so much about Allison. It's actually me adding, you know, your first name and your last name and middle name, if you have one, right? That's what the soul is looking for. The soul needs to have this because you're, the soul knows what your last name is going to be, right? I mean, you're being born into a certain family. The other thing is sometimes people intuitively know that, you know what, I need to go by a different name because every time you change your name, you're now adding, um, like, this another layer of frequencies on top of your birth name, right? So you can't ever change your soul contract. When you change your name, you're not changing your soul contract. Like you can't change your birthday if you don't like it, right? <laughs> so the same way you can't change your birth name, but you can come up with a different name. 
And oftentimes people have just intuition about it or they'll be given a name. Like I did a reading for a woman yesterday who was given this um, first name and she paired it with her last name. And when we looked at the frequencies, it couldn't have been more perfect mm. for her, right? And that was just an intuitive name that she got from a spiritual guru. So I think um, in the Western society, we are very much attached to our names. We feel like it's our identity. And of course it is our identity, but when you're ready to take on that next mission and you want more from life, it's okay to change your name up a little bit. Well, here's what's really interesting. As you say this, this really resonates with me. So uh, when we were talking before, I think I shared a little bit about this with you, but I've always felt like I have these 20 year phases in my life. And what's really fascinating is the first 20 years of my life, I was Allison Hildebrand um, because that was, um, you know, what I was born, no middle name. That's what my parents named me. And then I got married when I was 19, almost 20. And my name changed to Allison Larson. And what's really interesting is towards the end of this 20 year phase, before I graduated out of my marriage, even as I was starting more media and things, it went from Allison Larson to added the H, which is, was the first initial of my maiden name. So it's Allison H. Larson. This was my, my radio show, my TV show, like how I was branded for a long time. And then, um, you know, I graduated from that marriage, uh, married Gerald, entered into the soul partnership, felt a real shift in what I was doing in that I felt more called to be on the spiritual 5D level of creation. And that's when I started saying, okay, Allison H. Larson, that's not resonating with me anymore. And then this new name came in. So this is really fascinating and interesting. And it really resonates with me when you're talking about these name changes with these different missions or cycles in your life. That's really, really fascinating and interesting to me. Another thing that was interesting, and you guys, I'm so excited because if it aligns, we're going to see Eliana and I talked about maybe doing a mini reading on this uh, podcast so you can kind of see what she does. But we were talking about my name the other day before I invited her to be on the podcast. And I was telling her about, you know, Maya Rose Rogers. And um, she said, well, let's play around with adding an H in there. And H and especially AH has always been really significant to me. AH was my initials growing up, Allison Hildebrandt. And then I added that H when my business started growing and developing and I started getting on more stages. And what's so fascinating is so I thought I'm going to play around with this. I'm going to add the H at the end of Maya. And since I've been doing that, it's so fascinating. All of a sudden, all these business ideas are coming to me. These like foundations for what I'm creating in the 5D is coming to me and how to bring that into the matrix. And I'm like, wow, adding that H really did make a difference. So I feel like there's there are significant things about names and about letters and and the way that your name is, is sounds. So this is just so fascinating. I'm, I'm geeking out about this right now. In fact, geeking out about it so much, I'm going to have to maybe take off my sweater or pull the blinds <laughs> because I'm like getting all hot and excited. Yeah. Um, but but here's here's my next question for you. So before we go into the mini reading, you've already explained a little bit about what you do. I want to talk more about this, but I want to talk about how you got there because I feel like this is really significant as well. And especially for the people that are listening to this podcast, because so many of us are on this path to really align with our mission and our vision and to be able to be conduits of what the universe is wanting to flow through us. And you have a really fascinating story about stepping into this. And I think it's so beautiful because you surrendered so fully into it and the universe really provided this alignment. So uh, I'd love for you just to, Gileana, to share your story about how this all came to be and how you aligned with this and started doing this. Yeah, well, I would, I would love to share it. It's, a, it's such a fresh and raw story. So, um, you know, as you know, I had launched this company when I was 27, um, Networking Phoenix. And it was, I mean, it was my entire identity. I poured everything into it. Like, okay. When Gillian Uda says this, like, I really want, you to know, she was like the networking queen in Arizona, right? Like I moved to Arizona during the, the height of this um, networking group that she was running. And like, everybody's like, you've got to know, you've got to know Gelly. You went by Gelly then. Got to yeah. know Gelly. Got to know Gelly. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just want to, I just want to add my testimony to that. Like when you say networking, it wasn't some kind of small thing. This was like a huge, big, I mean, thriving empire that you had created and built. So go ahead. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And it's, it it's, it, it's true. I mean, it was, 
yeah, it, it really, and it was needed at the time because here's the thing, you know, again, if we want to look at this spiritually, you know, I um, quit my uh, corporate job <laughs> on a whim. My manager pulled me into the office and told me she they needed me to put in more hours. And I opened up my mouth and I said, well, then I quit. And we both were like in shock. And I was like, what just happened? Like, I wasn't planning on quitting, but I like, I was guided so strongly to launch this networking group and company. And I had no idea what it was going to be. Well, and that was my first time, essentially, let's say going viral and 14, 15 years ago, we didn't have the words going viral. Right. But it blew up in the community. And, but that was in 2008 when the economy crashed and people needed like network, they needed to be in groups, right. Cause they were all getting laid off and whatnot. And so I felt like I was at the right place at the right time. But again, I was surrendering because I used that word surrender earlier I wasn't planning on quitting my corporate career that I went to, um, you know, school for, but it happened. And I'm like, okay, I guess I quit. And I guess now I'm going to be launching this company. So I did, it did its thing. Um, and I ran that company for 14 years. Um, 14 years is a long time, right? I mean, my identity is tied to it, all the things. So um, around the age of 34, Actually, at 34, I um, graduated from my marriage. I love how you say that. I graduated from my marriage. Um, and my ex-husband was actually my technical co-founder, too, of the company. So it was a, it was a big graduation. <laughs> Lots of celebration going on. Yeah. But, um, so, but I began my healing journey around that time. And the reason I say 34, this is actually significant. Because around the age of 35 is when uh, we shift from the physical aspects of our life into the spiritual. The first 35 years are more so dedicated to us figuring out how to live on planet earth, right? Cause we're all born with amnesia. We don't, we're born, we don't know what's going on. Some of us are born into traumatic families. I mean, you know, it goes on and on and on. So around the age of 35, it's like, all right, you've been here long enough in the physical. Now let's start waking up the spiritual frequencies of why you're yeah, here. This really makes sense. I mean, you said that I look back at my life and I feel like when I was 35 years old, that's when all of a sudden I'm like, what am I doing here? How am I serving the world? How am I going to serve them more? Like that was, that was a huge, I, I felt that shift for sure. So that's fascinating. I've never heard that before, but it totally matches with the timeline of my life. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it does for so many people. So I tell people, if you experience some sort of trauma around that age, you're right on time, you know, cause trauma is life's way of getting you back on track if you're not aligned. <laughs> So um, anyway, so I go on this massive healing journey and it was during that time that I discovered the soul contract work. And when I discovered it, it was like every cell in my body just like lit up. I, I, I don't have the words to describe what happened when I saw it. It was like, I needed it immediately. You know, like I, I couldn't get this information fast enough into my brain. Like for the next few weeks, as I started to study it, it's like, I was not even physically on this plane. At one point I was like, I need to get out of the house. I called one of my friends. We went to dinner and I was knocking everything over. Like it was the strangest thing. Like I literally wasn't here. Um, so because I was up my, I don't know, you know, we're constantly astral traveling, which is like a whole other thing, but I was studying it. So I start to embody this work. Essentially, when I studied, was studying with my teacher, he said to me, and I felt this, he's like, you've done this work before. And I'm like, okay, thank you for validating that, because that's how I feel. It came to me so naturally, it feels like it's just such a big part of me before I even discovered it. It was like, oh my God, I finally found it is what it felt like. So I start this doing this more of a, uh, and I want to, I want to pause here and just really, um, just really sit with this for a second, because what I'm hearing from you is when you found this work, it was more of a remembrance. Yes. Um, and that's, and I think that's really important to take note of, because I think that's how a lot of people feel when they, when they step into alignment with their purpose, when they find that modality or that thing that fully aligns with them, it's not so much like, oh, this is something new. It's like, oh, 
This is something I'm remembering. This is something that I've done before. This is something that I've heard of before this. And it so fully aligns that you do realize that this is just part of who you are. Like you are an extension of this knowledge. You're the voice piece of it. You're the hands of this thing that's wanting to be created or coming through you. Because so many people ask me, they say, well, how do I know if this is my purpose? How do I know if this is my calling? How do I know if this is my life mission? Well, there, there's a lot of different ways to know, but I think what you described is one way of knowing, of saying, wow, I, this is it. Like, this is what I'm, I'm meant to be or supposed to be doing right now. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. It, absolutely. And, yeah. And, and you're so right. And so I, like you said, when you know, you just know that there, there were no words, there are no words to describe what I felt when I came across this work. I, mm -hmm. every cell in my body lit up, like I just knew. And so I started doing readings on the side as I was running Networking Phoenix. And, you know, but my ego kept saying, what are you going to do? Just, you're going to go from having this massive company that you've built this empire. Like you said, this wasn't a small rinky dinky. I mean, this was an empire. And I was like, you're going to leave that to go do readings for people. You know, like, how does the ego like make sense of that? Oh my gosh, I had such a similar experience. I, I just want to pause and say this because I'm sure there's people who have gone through this. I had such a similar experience when I was going through my name change and when I was focusing on new things, I'm like, but wait, all of my branding's built around this and I have TV shows and the radio shows and it's like, it, it, and then I just had to realize that's not really, those things aren't who I am, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, but it is hard. It's hard to see like the things you've built under this identity and then to be like, what? I'm supposed to let all that go? <laughs> like, so it can, it can be, it can be challenging, but you did it. You did it. I did. I did it, you know, and uh, honestly, I was already inching towards it. Um, and what happened was like the final thing was I woke up on my 40th birthday. Okay. So I'm 41 now. So I woke up on my 40th birthday. It was in May and every year on, you know, like, like I remember the conversation I had with my guys when I woke up on my 30th birthday it's just very significant. And so I woke up on my 40th birthday, opened my eyes and I had this daunting feeling, right? I hear them. I, I mean, it's a feeling. And it was like this knowing of if I don't step into doing what I came here to do, trauma is about to follow. Like I got a really clear message. I am no longer going to be supported in the 3D networking Phoenix situation, essentially. They were like you, and, and the reason they said trauma is about to follow is because like I said earlier, trauma is life's way to get you on track. So if I wasn't going to go willingly, they were going to have to send me trauma <laughs> to wake me up and get me back. Well, I know better than not to listen. Okay. So I said, uh, I wasn't ready for this today, but okay, let's do this. So I got on TikTok to start sharing the soul contract work. Again, mind you, I'm already doing this on the side for three years at this point. I'm doing the readings for three years on the side at this point. So I get on TikTok and I start sharing it and TikTok just blew me up, started to go viral. I mean, crazy viral. Like I've, the, the, where's this coming from? I woke up one morning being scheduled out all the way through the end of the year, through December 31st or something. And I, I couldn't even believe it. So I was like, okay, I see I'm being supported. I am clearly stepping into what I'm supposed to do. So I put up Networking Phoenix for sale, ended up selling it. This was the smoothest transition of my life. I could have not planned it this way. And I share this story in such detail because I want people to know when you're following your mission, when you're aligned with what you're supposed to be doing, you're always going to be supported even with, like, I didn't plan this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. There's one other thing too that I'd love for you to share. When you were sharing the story with me the other day, you actually had a mentor or spiritual um, leader in your life tell you that you needed to change your name and that that's what would lead to the sale. Can you share that story? Because I thought this was so interesting too and goes right along with the readings of the name and name changes. So uh, will you share that, that bit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, so my teacher, um, Nicholas, um, we were in, in class one time and, um, I said, you know, Nicholas, I'd like to change my name. And, um, he says, okay, well, 
and the thing is when you're changing your name, you're going to be wanting to, you're, you're going to want to look for specific frequencies to infuse your name with, depending on maybe what you're trying to accomplish or uh, with the particular um, karmic numbers that you have to help you work through that karma. So he says to me, he says, well, what do you want? And I said, well, I want financial freedom, right? Don't we all? <laughs> and I, um, I want to sell my company and I just want to be able to do my spiritual work. He says, okay, well, you need a 224. That's this particular frequency in the beginning of your name. And so in class, there's a few of us and we're playing and um, one of my peers, she comes up with this name and she's, and okay. Cause the other thing is when you go through a name change, how do you come up with a name? So one of the things that we suggest to people is what do people call you by accident? Because nothing is really by accident. So do okay, people- well, this is interesting because then I need to change my name to Heather because everybody's always called me Heather from the time I was great. My parents almost named me Heather. And there's so many random people have been like, but maybe it's the age thing. I don't know. I just, just a side note, but that's been random throughout my yeah. life. And people will just come up to me and they'll be like, Heather. And I'll be like, no, I'm Allison. <laughs> like, what? Where did wow. you get really interesting. We, okay. should <laughs> we should check Heather then because that that's the first thing he says. It's not a coincidence people are reading your frequency, right? So um, for me, people have always called me Galeana, right? Because so my birth name is Galeana and Americans can't pronounce Galeana. So when they try to say back, they say Galeana. Mm. And when I was younger, I didn't like it. I felt like they were butchering my name and that's why I went by Gelly. But when I heard my teacher say that, I'm like, oh my God, my whole life, people have been telling me the name I need to be called by. And so I said, okay, let's try Galeana. So my peer, the gal, she comes up with a spelling. Anyways, we look at it. And if you look at my name, Galeana Akin, it's like, you're, you're like, what, what is her name? You know, like now mind you, I'm in the spiritual world. So to me, this name is perfect because it's a spiritual name. I love all the A's and the H's in the 3D sense. It's, it's a little unique. So I'm still running networking Phoenix. And I say to my teacher, I say, Nicholas, I can't change my name to this right now. People are going to think, you know, some, some going on with me, you know, like I'm crazy or, or whatever. And he says, and I said, I want to sell the company and then change my name. He's like, well, that's not how it works. <laughs> He's like, you've got to change your name because you've got to bring in the new frequencies and you're going to bring in the, the sale of the company that way. Mm. And I was like, okay, you know, so I initially changed it on my Instagram because my Instagram was uh, a lot less eyeballs. Let's just put it that way to see how it feels. And it felt so good. Mm -hmm. It felt so good that one night, I, like a few months after I changed on Instagram, I'm laying in bed. It was like midnight and I just picked up my phone. I said, I'm going to do it. And I changed it on Facebook. I just did it, you know, and it felt so liberating, like just stepping into this new me. So. Yeah. And almost permission to like be the fullest expression of yourself. I, I love that so much. Okay. So I'm excited. This is, this is selfish, but I know that people are going to get something out of this. So I would love to step into doing a mini reading so people can see how this works and, and um, you know, what this looks like with you. And then at the end, I'd love for you to share how people can get readings with you um, because I know there's going to be a lot of people interested and I know your calendar is pretty full and booked up, but, um, but anyway, I'd love to to, to at least let people know how they can do that. So um, are you up for it? You want to do it? Of course. Do oh yes. This okay. is the best part. <laughs> so tell, do I need to like, do I need to light some incense or something? No, I... no, no. Well, I mean, you, you can, if you want, but I think I do need permission to share my screen. Oh, and I do have it. Perfect. That's all I need. If you, if you want to do a, you're welcome to yes. uh, get incense, get comfortable, take your sweater off. If you're okay. too, I am going to take my sweater off because okay. this, this conversation has made me like, really excited. I'm getting a high. I already changed the blinds, but there you go. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready now. Okay. I'm ready. Perfect. Can you see my screen by the way? And yes. yes. Okay. And, um, just to triple check, this is the name as written on your birth certificate, correct? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Now I say as written because you'd be surprised. So many people's birth certificates are misspelled. Oh, that's interesting. Well, and yeah. also, okay, here's just a little side note. Like my son, he has a middle initial of H um, without a period. So do periods matter too, with or without? No, no. no. Okay. It's, it's essentially how people are just going to enunciate the letter. Okay. Yeah. All right. But yes, this is how it is on my birth certificate. Okay. I love it. So 
Um, again, I've already mentioned, I already, you know, we talked about where the name's important. So this is your name in numerical frequencies, right? So like I said, the A is one, the L is t uh, the 12 sound frequency. Okay, so I take these frequencies, I put them around the star. Now, we know this as a Star of David. The Star of David is actually a 2D version of a sacred geometry symbol called the tetrahedron, right? A Merkaba. Merkaba, which yeah. And which we do so much work with uh, Metatron's cube. And that's the, also the basis of Metatron's cube, like yep. a Merkaba, yeah, David, Star of David. So significant sacred geometry. Yeah, 100%. So again, I just try to always explain it to people that may not be as familiar. And this is also the heart chakra symbol. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. You know that we see this in other places now the triangle that's facing down again this is where we get all the physical aspects physical karma physical talents physical mm -hmm. goals and again this is what you experience the first 35 years of your life uh, very dominantly around the age of 35 this triangle starts to kick in and this is all the spiritual frequencies mm -hmm. right Fascinating. okay so um so let me ask you this. Okay, so your 17-8, which is your, your physical karma, you've got the 17-8 number. So I'll tell you, in the most positive sense, this is a public speaking frequency. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've always been called, I remember ever since I was a little girl, like in primary, someone would forget their talk and I'd be like, I'll volunteer. And they're like, do you have something prepared? And I'm like, no, but I'll improvise. At like seven years old, I've always just felt called to speaking. So yeah, that makes a yes. lot of sense. Yes, yeah. always a hundred percent. You were born to speak. And in particular, you're meant to speak into society. Like mm -hmm. you're meant, your voice is meant to be heard and shared. Uh, it's, it's through you. It's through your voice is how you, like you can emotionally connect with people. Right. So when you've done your, like everything you've done in the past and even what we're doing right now, like you're, you're sharing your story, you're sharing stories, you're connecting emotionally, but it, it's all coming from here. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's sitting in your karma. So mm. what does that mean? Okay, so what the, our karmic numbers, we have two. Our karmic numbers are going to be the biggest challenge that the soul brought in to work through. So even though it's your biggest challenge, it's also your greatest gift. Mm. And when you work through your karma in any given lifetime, you don't have to come back and do it again. Okay, so initially, let me ask you this. When you were born, again, think of back when you were a child, did you ever actually felt like maybe somewhat suppressed and like you weren't actually able to express yourself or speak your truth? Or maybe if you did, you would get in trouble. Oh yeah, absolutely. And in fact, I remember going back to like my 20 year high school reunion and everybody was like, what happened? You were so shy in high school. You never talked. And I'm like, I didn't feel that way, but that was like what everybody perceived. And I was always worried. Am I going to say the right thing? Am I going to offend somebody? Am I going to get in trouble? Am I going to, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I definitely, definitely felt that when I was younger and that was reflected back to me by so many people. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, that's one of the aspects of the 17 eight is they're they're in they're uh they have like a challenge uh it's almost like a self-worth thing like you said i don't want to say the wrong thing so they don't speak you know and sometimes this can go even deeper like depending on how people's lives played out but the the lesson with 17 is called slavery to freedom so mm -hmm. sometimes initially in life or at some point in life they feel maybe a little bit enslaved and they're finding their freedom. And again, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, maybe freedom um, of a particular lifestyle that they're not really, you know, want to be a part of anymore. But it's like, it, it's finding your freedom. And with the 17, this is actually the analogous mouthpiece of God, creator, source, again, whichever word people want to use. So when you say things, you're extremely healing to people. It's, it's, it's like, it's like the, the freak, the energy, the source energy just comes through you and you say the right thing at the right time to the right person. Mm. Yeah. I I've definitely felt that in the past and I've struggled with trusting that. So maybe that's part of that karma of, of being able to speak and not holding back when I feel those things flowing through me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, don't hold back. You know, th there is, um, um, I remember there was this gal, we were doing a reading and she had the 17, eight and she's never felt sort of a, a slavery challenge, but what she did tell me one time, she's like, you know, like, cause she has all this wisdom. And she said to me, I just, I have this wisdom, but I don't, I don't know if I want to share it with people. Like, I feel like they're not worthy of it, you know? And she was almost saying it in jest, but that's actually the epitome sometimes of this frequency is, uh, people like, 
the people that carry it, like, like whatever's holding them back to share, it, there's always something holding them back. But essentially, you've got to work through all these blockages, whatever it is they are for you, because you're here to free flow with your voice and, and connect emotionally. It's like politicians have this frequency, right? Just the public speaking. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I'm definitely already in my mind. I won't go into depth here, but thinking about like, oh man, why am I holding back in this place or this place or this place? And and already as you're talking, thinking, what would it look like just to unapologetically speak whatever's flowing through me at whatever time without wondering if I'm offending somebody or if you know somebody's thinking this or that. So so that's really beautiful. That um, definitely I'm going to make a commitment to myself to step more fully into my unapologetic expression when it comes to that. Good. Well, good because. Here's the other really fascinating part is it, your triangle that's facing down. So you have a five, five in the physical town and a five, five in the physical goals. It's the same number. The five, five is all about speech and expression of your mm -hmm. truth. So basically your entire triangle that's facing down is about you speaking your truth and expressing mm -hmm. yourself and communicating. Um, Maybe that's why I liked Burning Man so much because I got to wear all these like outfits and I'm like, here I am <laughs> that I know wouldn't probably go over well if I wore them to the grocery store in Utah or to my son or daughter's, you know, play at school. But, you know, hey, we're working towards a more open and accepting society. So. <laughs> no, absolutely. And your pictures look gorgeous. Yeah. And it, it's funny because I'm the same way. Like I love to dress up. I have a whole... Um, closet, you know, like I called my fairy clothes, you know, but oftentimes I do wear the, I just wear these gorgeous dresses around mm -hmm. everywhere. And it's funny because I get all these compliments and my daughter's always, moving. she's like, why are people complimenting on your dresses? Like, she's like, you wear this dress all the time. I'm like, I know, but that's because like, I want to feel like a fairy goddess. That's just, that's my inner child. That's my inner play. And so I wear these goddess dresses everywhere I go. You know, and for Renaissance Festival, I have like my little elf years, right? Because I'm very connected I to that. that. To By that the way, realm. I'm, I'm half elf. See, I have one elf ear. You one are. <gasps> you <laughs> are. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. So I get that. But that's, you're 100% correct. This is your expression and you're here to express yourself. So the fives, um, the key word for five is also truth. So this tells me you're highly intuitive, like highly, highly. And when people lie to you, you know it, you don't like it. You've probably always known it. Um, it's, that's a big thing for you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yes. The fives are also um, like, it, it, and again, I don't know where you are with this at this point in life, but it's the five wants you to be more assertive. So to speak up for yourself, to stand up for yourself, um, or sometimes the fives can be overly assertive, like they can go the other way. So it's about finding balance of, of speech and expression. Um, they're adventurous. They don't like to be held down. They're visionaries. They're trailblazers. V very theoral. Um, head can be up in the clouds often. Um, oh, here's another thing about the fives. You have this incredible way to tap into the collective consciousness. Mm, whether yes. you know it or not. Okay. So I was doing a reading yesterday for this woman in the UK and she had fives in her chart too. And I said, so if everyone is sad because the queen has passed and you don't care, you'll be crying. And she says, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't think of that. I've been crying for the last few days and I don't know why. And she's like, I don't even care about the, you know what I mean? She's like, I don't, but that's how it works. You're yeah. tapping in constantly into the collective consciousness. So you've got to be careful not to feel other people's anxiety, other people's fears, right? You've got to constantly be clearing that when you carry these five frequencies. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a gift in that too is, you know, during, especially during some, you know, planned ceremonies or things like I've seen the flower of life covering the earth and I've like understood like how we're all interconnected and these different things, but, but you're right. I'm extremely empathic and I've had to really um, learn some tools throughout my life to be able to understand what's mine and what somebody else's and how to give whatever I'm feeling of the world or somebody else's like back to mother guy. Like, yeah. So that's, that definitely resonates with me for sure. Yeah. So, um, there you go. So again, we can, we're doing a mini reading, so I'm not going to go. I know, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm like, there, but... Oh, keep going. But I'm also yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, no, it's just a mini reading, but this is just, and, and here's what I, I love about this too. I, I truly believe 
that when we gain a deeper understanding of ourselves, that we can more fully align with our purpose. And so much of this is, you know, we feel like misunderstood or we feel like we're the only ones experiencing something and receiving a reading like this, it makes me feel so understood and so aligned with my purpose. And it really does help me to understand how to, you know, use my weaknesses as gifts. You know, I, I, our, our gifts are just our weaknesses turned up too high or too low, however you want to see it. Um, so, so this is really, 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 really powerful. This is, this is beautiful stuff. Like I'm just getting the chills when you're talking. So, but, but let's move on. I mean, I know we could go way deeper into this. I think I'm going to schedule another appointment with you after this. So I can oh really, yeah. Yeah. We, we don't with my name, but, um, Yeah. We need yeah. to play. But, you know, it, it's also, it's a lot of validation for people. And afterwards, people tell me I've never felt this scene, which yes. I think is so important, you know, because so many of us walk around feeling misunderstood by others or not understood. And when you can talk to somebody that sees you um, and validates your deep inner thoughts, it's life-changing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just to piggyback yes. on that. But okay, so that's your triangle facing down. So now let's look at your triangle facing up. So your other spiritual karma, this is a 10 one. So the 10 ones, they're service souls. So you are here to be in service to people. Um, I'm sure not a surprise for you, uh, but the 10 ones usually have this deep feeling of just wanting to help others. And again, it sounds so cliche in, in many ways, but, but to them, it's like the core, it's like something they, they need to do it. Otherwise they feel miserable. Well, it's so funny because like, even as we're talking about our events and things and Gerald's like, let's have fun, let's do this. And I'm like, but what is it doing to help people? Yeah. How am I helping people in this? Like, I can't just go have fun. And he's like, why not? And I'm like, cause that's not fun for me. Like, I need to know how is this helping somebody? And then it'll be fun to me. Then it'll be meaningful to me. So that's, that's really interesting. And even more looking at our marketing stuff, I'm like, okay, how is this video going to help somebody? How is this affecting? You know, it's all about that. I'm so driven by that, that um, yeah, that's, that's really, that's really spot on with that. It's always been like, how can I help somebody? Like, how can I be of service to this person? How can I bring greater knowledge or awareness or healing? You know, I can be a, be a conduit of that in their life. So that definitely resonates with me. Yeah. Well, good, good. I'm glad. And so again, see, I'm just, I'm validating. This is why you are the way that you are, because it is really important for you to, to help people. And, um, the 10 ones that, you know, you're here to be a leader with great integrity. Um, this tells me in a past life, maybe you misused your power in some way or something, you know, so you're just, again, bringing it in, in this lifetime to actually be a leader of light and step into the integrity, which you're obviously doing. Um, the 10 one tells me, I don't know, have you ever had challenges with men, maybe like father or. Yeah, well, you know, absolutely. I mean, obviously I was married for, you know, 20 right. years and then divorced. And and yeah, I definitely think the parent that I seek the most validation from is my father, uh, you know, if I'm looking back on life and different things. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, so again, just kind of touch, just, you know, we, again, we're not going super deep, but touching on it because the 10 one usually tells me um, there's challenge, could, potential challenges with men, because this one right here, this is representative of Archangel Michael who's the divine masculine. And I don't know if you do any work with Archangel Michael. Yeah, but in fact, Gerald actually channels for him. So this is really okay. interesting because I'm kind of more like Mary Magdalene. He's more of like Archangel Michael. So it's fascinating that you bring that up because he's actually in my mind, this like divine, like masculine representational yep. physical form of Archangel Michael. Yeah, he's so, he's, so he's with you very strongly too because of this one. Okay, so that's why I'm mentioning that. But again, because he's the divine masculine, yours is sitting in your karma. This is where you were going to have challenges with men again until you clear that you know, yeah. and then you uh, step into the divine masculine energy. Right. Yes. So there yes. you go. That's I like, the like I've gone through that process. <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like I've done that. I'm going to, I'm going to claim that I'm in a good, I'm in a good spot right now, but yes, I've had that, have those challenges in the past. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good, good. Well, yeah. And so in the positive sense, the 10 ones are their natural healers. Mm -hmm. um, they can channel, um, they, I mean, the 10 one, this is the highest spiritual frequency in this entire modality. Um, it's the, in the 10 right here, this is the androgynous expression of God, the creator universe, again, whichever words you, you want to use. But um, so this is the male, female. So maybe at some point in life, maybe you felt like you were imbalanced in your masculine and feminine. Maybe you were more in your masculine. And so now I know you're doing a, you know, a lot of work with healing with the divine feminine. So obviously for you, you've had to 
you know, step into that and probably balance it, which is, which was part of the journey for you. Yeah. So I'm seeing some of that right here. Beautiful. Yes. 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 And yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you've got this nine, nine spiritual talent. So when you have a nine, nine sitting in either one of your talent positions, this tells me there's literally nothing in life you could not accomplish. Okay. I was telling you this before you, you were kind of just doing like a couple of like, I'm like, what do you say about my name? What's a couple of things. One of the things you said was this idea of feeling like I was always unstoppable. And it's so fascinating. It's not, not even from an egoic place. There has never been anything in my life that I felt like I couldn't do if I put my mind to it. And, um, and because of that, I've been able to do some extraordinary things. Like there's no, there's, there's no idea in my mind. Like I, I, I actually, uh, you know, had um, an NBA basketball player in my sphere of influence and that I, I dated for a while. And I was like, yeah, if we play one-on-one, -on -one, I could be you. I mean, it could be, it could be possible. You know, <laughs> he's like seven foot tall and I'm like five, five, ten anyway. But yeah, that was like, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, it could be possible. It could, it, could happen there could be a way that I could be him so yeah that that resonates with me for did sure did you beat him he never would play me oh, I think, I think he, he, he would probably beat me but. that's funny that's yeah. funny um no but that that is such a wonderful mindset and you're you're correct but so, so yeah so this nine so the nine is the most powerful frequency in this entire modality okay so the 10 one is the most spiritual the nine nine is just the most powerful and this is a dragon Mm -hmm. So I don't know have people ever found you intimidating or have told you that they feel intimidated by you? Yeah. And in fact, I worry all the time. I'm like, if I step fully into my power, is it going to be too much for people? Like mm -hmm. in so many different areas of my life, I have this worry. Maybe that goes back to the physical thing of like, man, if I unleash all of me, it's going to be a lot and you may be intimidated or you may be, you know, like this may be too much for you. So um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. And that is a typical uh, worry of the nines because it's like secretly they know how powerful they are. And they, again, they worry, is it too much? They worry about, because the nine can also come with a destruction power and destruction isn't always bad. Sometimes we need to destruct the old to step into the new. And like, that's something I always felt. Like I always felt like I carried some dark destructive power. And, and then I, you know, again, once I got into this work, I'm like, oh, that's what I'm feeling. Okay. Yeah. But that's just, that's my power. And that's meant for me to actually step into it. So same for you. you, you're here to step into it because when you're functioning at that level, you're going to have even more gifts available to you. Like the nines, they, I don't know. I don't know if you hear, I don't know if you talk. Okay, so them. when I very first got my Reiki attunement, which was fascinating, I just felt my hands tingling one day. I got the thought, asked my friend about it the next day, had no idea what Reiki and energy work was randomly asked this friend I thought she would think I was crazy she's like no I'm actually that's Reiki and I'm teaching a Reiki class tomorrow and you should come and I'm like what's Reiki and I came and then all of a sudden I started seeing colors around people like I can I can move water I can move wind I can dissolve clouds I can on a darker side I can shoot energetic darts at people I choose not to but I I mean I've experienced that in the past and so there are there are a lot of like I'm like there there really is um yeah, there's a lot of power there. So not, not something I normally to lead with in a conversation. So uh, my name yeah. is Rogers. I can solve clouds. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's hilarious. You can talk. I mean, I have these conversations on the daily, right? So to me, this is like the norm. You know, I love when I'm in a reading and people say, you think you're going to think I'm crazy. I'm like, who do you think you're talking to? Like you're, we're doing a soul contract reading. So no, this is normal. Speak to me. And yes, I see that now again, because you have so much power, you actually, you got to be really careful not to accidentally shoot any darts because you're going to generate karma, right? You know, yeah. That. Yeah. I, I learned that from a very young age. Like, yes, do yeah. not do that. I'm like, okay. Yeah. But this, but this is where it's coming from, you know, I mean, in very, very powerful frequencies. So again, um, I'm glad that you know this about yourself and even more could be available, you know, if you keep stepping more and more into your power, but with the nines and the tens integrity is like so important with them because mm -hmm. the unhealed nines, these are your narcissists, right? Mm -hmm. So I see a lot of, um, women coming to me, um, with, you know, and they have nines and, and then they start telling me about this narcissist or, or they don't even tell me that, but they tell me about their 
significant other or whatever. And I could tell right away, they're narcissists. I pull up their names. Sure enough, they have nines. And so, cause the nine energy attracts another nine energy. It's almost like a power struggle. Yeah. Really, you know, really so. fascinating. Cause I've definitely attracted that in my life before. And I've also, I mean, to be honest, I've, I've looked at myself and thought, you know, am I being, am I displaying traits of narcissism? And like, I, so I can totally see how that would be something that um, could, could potentially be an issue if, if I wasn't in alignment. So yeah, absolutely. That's, that's really beautiful to know. Well, yeah. I know we've only got like six more minutes and I've got, I, I want to get to the 22. I've got a couple of questions for you and then I want to let people know how they can get this from you. So, um, yeah, I'll talk give really me, fast. Give, give me the reading of the rest yeah. of it. This really is, fast. Okay. With you. Yeah. So, so your 20 dash two frequency in the quickest form is essentially you're somebody who loves to explore. You're an experiential learner. You want to go touch, you want to go travel, you want to yes. go experience. And when you do all of that, you yes. come back and teach that to people. So see the two, they're teachers. Yes. Oh my gosh. When I was at Machu Picchu, I like got all these downloads and I came back and I was doing this healing session with somebody. I could feel like the power of Machu Picchu flowing through me. I'm like, this is why I travel. Like I can take the energy of these places and like channel it. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. Yep. And so, um, you're meant to like teach people all these different spiritual modalities that you've experienced, right. Mm -hmm. From your own, that's essentially what this is. And in a nutshell, there's a lot more and your soul destiny 12, three, you're a spiritual guide. Um, you're extremely maternal. You probably mother everybody around you. Um, you always have a million things going on. So it's important for you to slow down so you can feel everything that's sitting deep inside your canal and the depth. Um, but at the, again, at the core of it, you are here to, um, um, to be a spiritual guide for people. Mm, yeah, I, I definitely, definitely feel that. And you're spot on with the maternal energy. And we did our burning man camp recently, you know, everybody's packing up and I'm like making food for everybody and they have gas in their hands. So I'm like feeding them the food. I'm bringing them the water with electrolytes. Nobody gets dehydrated. And they're yeah. like, thanks mom. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get a lot of nurses that come to me with this frequency because they're natural caregivers. Yeah. That's beautiful. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I just want to express like, being in this mini reading and I definitely want to do a greater one with you but like I feel right now so seen and so heard and so understood and so validated and also so inspired um, I really feel like um, because you've seen and pointed out these gifts through my charts I'm inspired to do more of them I'm inspired to continue on my path so yeah wow this is so beautiful I would encourage everybody to to do this process this is really beautiful Gileana thank you so much okay so I have a couple of pressing pressing questions for you yes and then I want to make sure we get to you know how people can get a hold of you so number one I want to uh, what do I need to add to my name to create greater financial freedom in my life. As soon as you said that, I'm like, okay, I want to know. I have to know that secret. <laughs> okay, great, great question. So, um, we're only, so you would want tw a 22-4 in your name, and I don't actually see that in any of your names. So we would have to play with it. I'm not going to be able to solve this for you in like 60 seconds. Yeah, yeah. But no. when you come back, we'll play with it. But it's a it's it's a 22-4, or you're going to want at least one fours, and you don't have any of that in any of the names. So. Ooh, okay. So this is really powerful. So I'm going to schedule an appointment with you. So we're going to figure out how to get that 22, four into my name. That's the, the next like phase of my life that I'm like, okay, this is the next evolution of my area of growth is really creating the strong financial foundation and freedom and being able to do it in like a solid manner. That's not like up and down. So i um, definitely schedule with you. Okay. So how do I schedule with you? And just tell me, so everybody knows, and I'm going to be the first one to hop on before your calendar fills up. So uh, <laughs> yes, of course. Absolutely. So people can find me on my website at your souls contract.com. Okay. So your souls contract.com and souls plural. Correct. Yep. Oh yeah. Right there. Okay. There yep. it is. And then your once you get there, I'm, I'm there right now. So what yes. Like? Yeah. Okay. That's me. What, what do I do now? Well, scroll down. I mean, you'll see there's uh, different scheduling options. So people can schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with me or right. people can schedule a, um, or get a digital reading. Um, there are different price points. And then if you click yeah. through to the services page, you'll see um, all the other things I do. Because again, we can look at name optimization. I work with people's businesses to optimize their business names. I can help people pick their baby's name. I don't know if you're daughter has a baby name already picked out. That's something we can take a peek at, you know? Um, so there's a few different things I do with the sound frequencies. 
and, and healings as well. So. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Well, I'm on your page right now. I see the different options. I'm going to click and schedule as soon as we're done. Gilliana, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the work that you're doing. And thank you for being such a beautiful example of really aligning with your purpose and stepping and surrendering fully into what you're being called to do for listening to your spirit guides. Thank you.